archaeologists have discovered yet another ancient anomaly, which has linked a now lost but once clearly advanced global civilization. Pertaining to a wall relief in Peru, belonging to the oldest civilization in the Americas. The wall, although dated to approximately 3,800 years ago, depicts what many now believe is an illustrated narrative of the difficulties they experienced prior to a cataclysm caused by an ancient climate change. One meter high and 2.8 meters long, the wall relief was discovered in the seaside archaeological site of Vichama, 110 kilometers north of Peru's capital, Lima. The Vichama site is part of the recently discovered, yet now lost, Caral civilization, also known as Norte Chico. Dated at over 5,000 years ago, this dating alone makes it the oldest civilization known to have dwelled within the Americas, now claimed as purely coincidental. This civilization flourished around the same time as that of the thriving civilization of Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, and also Chinese civilizations. The Corral civilization was located in the Supi Valley, along the north-central coast of Peru. Made of adobe, a clay-like material, the wall seemingly documents climate change, one which could not have been contributed to by human activities. Archaeologist Ruth Shandy, who oversaw the excavations at the site, hypothesized that the serpents within represented a water deity that irrigated the earth and made seeds grow. She believes the relief was likely done towards the end of a drought and famine, that the Corral civilization, among others we have covered in the past, once experienced with other reliefs displaying emaciated humans. Many self-funded archaeologists now believe, like we have postulated, that the discovery reinforces the notion that these early humans were depicting the difficulties they faced due to climate change and a depletion in available water for irrigation, which had a large impact on their agricultural production. The excavation has, to date, unearthed the ruins of 22 buildings in a 25-square-hectare space. It would appear that, just like that of the site of Tikal, and the now lost plaque which once depicted the dramatic scene of a cataclysm, a great flood, along with erupting volcanoes, with a boat seemingly attempting to escape this event, surrounded by many of the population drowning, a cooperating artifact fortunately photographed before its mysterious disappearance. Was there indeed a great flood? One which seemingly followed a great famine? It would seem the evidence for such an event is mounting, thanks to not only the evidential sediments which once drenched many of the still unexplained ancient sites of the world, but also by its depiction by those who lived through it. It is, indeed, a highly compelling mystery. Here at Mystery History, we cover the unexplained areas of antiquity, either ignored, avoided, dismissed, or simply given an incomplete or often illogical historical lifeline of existence by mainstream academia, particularly those which we have covered of significant size, quarried from many miles away, now often immovable, and once transported and either erected or placed atop one another seemingly effortlessly. We were, in a past series of investigations, looking into an interesting quarry within the Bazda cave system on the edge of Turkey, a place with particularly good granite and a proven source of stone for numerous megalithic sites many miles around. Later proven by us via the preserved linkages in tool marks to have been used by more than one group, as if they had coalesced at this particular site. Yet, as mentioned, we have long argued that not just one advanced civilization capable of moving and cutting these incredibly monumental megalithic stones have been and gone, and we feel we have and continue to provide sufficient proof of these claims. The Colossi of Memnon, said to have once sang at sunrise, are both made of stones thousands of tons in weight yet are eroding to dust along with countless others, yet clearly once precisely cut, 
just like all the other stone ruins we cover worldwide. Yet, sites like Petra and the polygonal casing stones found in some most curious of places, such as the pyramids of Egypt, preserving stones in a similar condition to the Colossi. Certain stone monuments of gigantic size, found and stored in near-perfect condition, are found in these same areas, as if somehow spared catastrophe. Does this prove a sudden great flood? They regardless, we claim, prove several cycles of activity at stone-cutting creation. Were some monuments submerged and therefore preserved under the sediments? like those secretly removed from the pyramids and sphinx during initial investigations. Were they attacked by a geological event? The perfect preservation of some of these statues must eliminate sandware as a possibility. The pursuit to the answers to these questions become closer, and we feel highly compelling. The Dighton Rock a 40-ton boulder in Massachusetts, USA, is a mysterious relic indeed. Not only does it not fit in with the surrounding environment, but the incredibly ancient inscriptions found upon it could unlock highly controversial truths regarding the reach of ancient civilization that would fly in the face of current academic theory. What is interesting regarding this enormous rock is that it was not only placed where it now lay by natural geologic activities many millennia ago, dropped where it lay on the shores of the Taunton River by the melting of an ancient glacier during the end of the last ice age, measuring 5 feet high, 9.5 feet wide, and 11 feet long, made of gray-brown crystalline sandstone. But no one has been able to say with certainty who first wrote upon the rock, what they wanted to communicate, or why they created these mysterious markings, with it now known to have been the inspiration for over 1,000 books and articles and the basis for over 35 hypotheses. The mystery and indeed debate regarding the writings on the Dighton Rock continue to this day. And a possible motivation for the mystery to remain unsolved is to protect the currently attested academic theories regarding the past of man. Thus, they could quite possibly be markings left by a past, now lost civilization, or one that has long been claimed to have been unable to have had such far-reaching settlements. The antiquity of the writings is undoubtable, as many scientific investigations have proved that they are indeed very old. Yet what is hotly debated is the origins, and indeed the civilization responsible for creating them. Although, predictably, since 1680, when Reverend John Danforth visited the rock, a mainstream academically approved theory regarding the stone has been put forward and popularized by said institutions. However, the fact that the glyphs, or possible language etched upon the rock, has never been deciphered remains. After seeing it, he decided that the carvings on it were made by Native Americans specifically the Wampanoag Indians, after being told the tale of a ship arriving, and a battle between the locals and mysterious newcomers were told to him from long ago in the distant past. Danforth drew the symbols visible on the top half of the petroglyph, and then wrote, quote, It is reported from the tradition of the old Indians that there came a wooden house with men of another country in it, swimming up the river Asinet, that fought the Indians and slew their sachem. Such interpret the figures to be hieroglyphical, the first figure representing a ship without mast and mere rack cast upon the shoals, the second representing a head of land, possibly a cape with a peninsula." End quote. Danforth's drawings were requested by the Royal Society of London in 1732 and are now preserved in the British Museum. This not only proof of their acceptance by mainstream academia, possibly due to its lack of any controversial claims, just a simple mention of newcomers, and no further mention of their possible identity. Yet the fact that these inscriptions remain undecipherable makes the possibility of the newcomers being from a locality nearby illogical, and suggests that they were, instead, created by a group who came from a now-lost or possibly concealed advanced civilization. 
Another hypothesis put forward by Isra Stiles in 1767, while he was the president of Yale College, claimed that the famous seafarers, the Phoenicians, had made their way all the way to North America on at least one voyage. Stiles believed that the writings were left by them to simply show that they were once there. Stiles' idea was a popular one in Europe for some time, and were embraced by Antoine Cortigebelin, a French scholar, as a possible answer to the identity of their creators. He said that the carvings on the rock should be split into three sections – the past, present, and future. Some of the images he identified were an oracle and butterfly, representing the future, a horse and a beaver meeting, symbolical representations of the two contents interacting in the present, and the divine figures or symbols of Minerva, Telesphor, and Priapus, representative of the past. Yet the mystery of who created the carvings remains to this day. Additionally, the original location of the carvings also remains a mystery. The fact that the boulder has landed where it now lay, due to geological activities, means it could have originated in a location far away from where it now lay. Was it made by a now lost civilization? Or possibly one that academia continues to claim was not able to travel such vast distances? The mystery surrounding the Dighton Rock continues, and it is undoubtedly one that is highly compelling.